How's it going guys? Today we're going to talk about arrays, so just how to set them up, how to create them. Um, there's a couple ways to create them. One of them could be manually, so you could put a declare your array, so let's call this one animals, and then declare how many elements you want in that. So if we have three elements, we'd put two, because elements start at zero, so however many you're going to have, subtract one from that. And then you manually enter them into your array, so you type out the name and then of course zero to start with and put in your first element or value uh, in your array so let's just have a horse in the first one all right and for the last and third one let's put a rabbit or something along those lines so now you've manually entered you know each of the values that you wanted into your array called animals and of course whenever you needed you could pull them up whether you use a message box or something else and whichever one you chose, you know, the one would correspond to that. So if we start this, it's going to display turtle like so. Uh, if you didn't want to do it one at a time like this, there's an easier way to do this is by saying array, and that's just a, a bigger regular function, and then type all your values out like that. So this is an array too. Now we just need to set it up to what we want to call it. So let's say we want to call this one names. So now this word right here, this variable, is an array of all these. And whichever one you display of the name, so let's display our our third array. That's going to be one zero one two, which is going to be Ben, which is our third one. And so let's start that. Now we'll get indeed Ben uh, for that third array right there. All right. So you can do it manually like this and have to and enter them in uh, like so, or you can set and use the array command to put them into a certain variable. If you have an array and you want to join them all together in one place, for example, use the join command like that. So you use the join command and then type out the name of your array. So let's use, actually, let's use the animal one. So type out the name of your array and then that's it. It will join them together. Now, if I start this, notice it will join them together and add a space in between each one. That space is the delimiter. And how to add your own custom one, put a comma right here and then put in your own one. So if I wanted it to be a comma, put a little space there, start it. Now they're separated by a comma and a space. So the default is just a space automatically. So you don't need to do that if you just want to use a space. But if you want your own custom one, put a comma after that and type out whatever you want. So we could even have a pipe right here started. And now they will separated by that pipe key right there. We can join the names array, obviously, too, and separate them out, too. You could even put a whole sentence in between each array. Um, or you could even use your line feed tab. So now they're going to be separated like a list going down. And you could use your VB tab as well and separate them out um, real space like. Okay, either one, uh, that's a quick way to join your array together. All right, so that will join an array together. We also learned the split command. Um, a couple lessons ago and of course as you know that one will take a sentence and you'll be able to split it up with your own custom uh, delimiter right there so either a space as default is usually or you know a comma or something along those lines so the join and split are kind of opposites of each other when it comes to arrays if you wanted to cycle through an array as well you could do that with a for loop so you say let's say for e for i and that's just going to be an integer that's going to take a place for i equals l bound okay of our array which is going to be names right here to u bound of our array okay i want to display a message box of the current array value so let's put an i here so that uh, it will change just like that all right so we're using l bound to get the lowest value in our array and we're using u bound to get the highest value so 
obviously we know arrays start at zero so this L bound is actually just going to turn with zero most all the time so there's really no point in using L bound right here because all of this is going to turn into zero and uh, for this names one that we put names let's see zero one two three four this U band is just going to turn into the number four but you don't always know how big your array is so it's good to use the U band but if you want this can be replaced with a zero so L bound just means the leftmost the farthest most position the beginning all right so what we're going to do is say for I equals zero two four in this case which is actually five list because it starts at zero then display the current name in a message box so, we, so let's get rid of this right here and go ahead and start this and now you'll see that it starts at uh, the zero because I is zero right now and then it loops through and it will increase I by one and then that will be the, the first or second value which is Jake all the way through to Allison so indeed actually if you wanted to see message box and you just put L bound of whatever array you had so if we use animals up here which I slaughtered and yeah, like so if we start this it will give us zero because that indeed is the starting position same thing is if we use names on here and started it we'll get zero if we use u bound it should give us the largest amount which is four because remember this is zero this is one this is two this is three and this is four so indeed u bound is for the last value so l bound and u bound that's how to use those definitely good for cycling through and finding out the length of your array Another cool thing you can do is filter through an array and kind of find uh, a certain character or a certain word. So what you can do is use the filter command and then type out your array name like so. Put a comma and type out what you're looking for. So in this case, I'm just looking for a capital J. And this is case sensitive, so if you put a lowercase, it will not display anything with a capital J. Alright, so this again we need a for loop to search through all these. So let's say for each name in the list of all the arrays names, this array right here, search for this J. Now defaultly uh, it's going to have a true value, but you can also sh not search for it, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Oops. Alright, so for each one of those let's just uh, do a message box of the current name, which is going to be this value of course and then go next. All the elements or values within this array that have a capital J should be displayed now in this message box. So, oops, um, I misspelled that. So for each name in filter name. So start this now. So you'll see capital Jacob and Jeremy which also has a capital J and that's it. So uh, true goes here and that's gonna say if they do have it. So it's the default you don't need to write it out. But if you're looking for all the ones that don't have it, you can put false here. Now when you start it up, all of them are going to be displayed that don't have a capital J in them. And let's go ahead and put these in the list. I put a variable up here so that I could do this. So that I don't have to click OK in, in each person's name. So let's display the, the name and also put a line feed tab after each name. And then after we're done cycling through it all, give us the final result. All right, yeah, that's better. So now we can see all the ones that don't have a capital J. So let's, just to show you it is case sensitive, let's put a, a capital A here and put true again. Okay, and all, the only one that shows up is Allison, even though there's Jacob with an A here and Michael with an A here. And in this case, all the ones with a lowercase A will be shown up. Uh, like so with that little case. So this is a great way to find out if your if one of your elements or values in your array contains a certain character or even a full name. Like you know, if you wanted to search a full name here, then start it. Indeed, it would uh, display that full name or search only that name. All right. So that is the filter command, and it's good. You know, if you're searching pretty much letter by letter through all of your arrays and then through each of their characters. But if you're searching through a whole value like so, you might not want to use the filter command. Now, there really isn't a value, there, or 
isn't a command that you can say is this value in my array and then type it out and it says true or false so uh, what we can do is do a little workaround so this code was actually uh, by Justin Dolls right here I don't know if I said that right but I found it. it's really nifty what he does and uh, pretty easy to understand too so I'll walk you all through it so what it is basically is lets you check to see if a certain value exists in this array really easily it gives you a true and false and lets you put it in an if statement and that's a big deal too so our array is the list of weekdays and this is our function right here so let's just go to the function and, and focus on that for a little bit so it says here's our check our string value that we're searching for and here's our array check so it's going to be the array we're checking for so first off we set our flag to be false that way uh, you know before we even run this we don't know if our value is in there so automatically we're assuming it's not and if it is that's when we're going to set it to true so first what we want to do is check to see if what we're checking for is indeed an array so is array will let you check your current array to see if it is an array or not so before we go searching through it we want to make sure it's array and also we want to make sure that whatever value they put is actually is not blank and actually is a value so to run this function you type is is in array and then you type in the name of what you're looking for or the value so let's say we're looking for Monday and then you type in what array that that value is in so in this case it's called my array up here as you see so that's how it works so now each of these values this value goes into here this this array gets put into this value once you make sure that it's a real array we have for i equals zero to u bound of our array so the last value in our array so we go until we've gone to every value within our array and what we're doing is checking to see if the current array value equals whatever we put in our string which would be Monday in this case uh, in this example if it does turn that flag to true and then of course at the end of all this we want to set our flag value of true back into our actual function because remember functions can return values and what this lets us do is say if is an array Tuesday of this array then say yes or say no so because we we return a false or true value this if statement can verify so if we do run this indeed we'll get yes right here um, and if like say with the filter command if all we had was twos right here and we ran it it would say yes still because twos is a part of all those words so that's why you can't really use the filter command to check through to see if a whole value exists you want to use uh, this little function right here all right that's the basics of arrays there is one more thing I want to talk about and that is adding to an array uh, so uh, unfortunately this video is getting kind of long so I will save it for another video um, when that video comes up you can click on the screen somewhere around here I'll have that up until then thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all next time